Internet, we have been having technology issues. Uh, we did see the IT crew in here, and I offered to help, but then they reminded me that I once called them because I had unknowingly unplugged my computer. I think, uh, however, things are back and we're functioning well again. So, we have uh, two more speakers, a uh, joint presentation today. So we are going to be welcoming Trevor Caswell and Dean Urban, which we, who will be presenting on Flying the Friendly Skies, Drones in Delivery and Logistics. Trevor joined the Edmonton International Airport in 2017 with the Air Service Business Development Unit. He is responsible for effectively executing air service delivery priorities while cultivating strong relationships with the free porters, business community members in the region, airline partners, key stakeholders at the airport. He joined Pharma Aero based in Brussels in 2019 as vice chair and overseeing the project management side. In April, he took over the chairman role with Ferrama Aero for a two-year term, and he has over 20 years in the aviation and logistics sector. He's worked as a VP, a director, and numerous management roles in both Ontario and Alberta. Impressive. Dean is an expert in aerodrome operations and regulatory compliance. With 27 years of experience in aviation, he currently serves as the Director of Aerodrome Operations and Compliance at Edmonton International Airport and Villeneuve Airport, where he focuses on creating and implementing core airfield maintenance and regulatory programs in accordance with Transport Canada standards. I have a hard time saying it. I'm sure you do it very well. He also serves as the chair of the Canadian Airport Council's Ops and Technical Advisory Committee. He is passionate about developing and monitoring operational initiatives to enhance the effective, effectiveness and efficiency of aerodrome aviation operations. Both will be speaking on drones and delivery and logistics. Welcome, gentlemen. Good morning, everyone. Uh, good morning to everyone here and online joining us. So we'll jump into things here. First off, we're going to start by um, a photo of both of our airports. So Edmonton International, YEG as we're known now, is located in Leduc County. And then we also have a second airport, uh, Villeneuve, ZVL, um, which is located in Sturgeon County as well. So um, first half of our presentation, we're going to provide you with more of a safety and operations overview. Um, covering the drone programs, the operational applications, and for that, I'll turn it over to our operations and aerodrome expert, Dean. Expert, yeah, there we go. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Appreciate uh, inviting us for this. So, yeah, so I wanted to just kind of go over a, a few things that uh, we're doing at Edmonton International as well as the Villanova Airport. And my very first slide, um, as always, is on safety. Uh, in an aerodrome, as everybody can imagine, we have, you know, we're inundated with regulations, uh, Transport Canada, Nav Canada, and everything we do is based on that safety aspect. So, we we have quite a um, history with the, in the drone space, and we start with a hazard identification risk assessment for every single operation that we do, which falls under the airport's uh, safety management system which we, is SMS, uh, I think everybody knows that airports just love acronyms, anything aviation. So, so it's really around ensuring that what you're doing is safe and obviously for, for very, very good reasons. And, and we've been able to adopt that and prove the concept of we're doing our operations safe within an aerodrome environment, which is very unique. Uh, we, we've, uh, Edmonton has been, uh, you know, uh, had the ability to really do a lot of firsts in the aviation and the drone or our past uh, perspective. And as we go, um, it, it just, it's like, uh, I think I heard earlier with the cell phone, um, you know, when you first had a cell phone, it was a, like half a suitcase. I'm, not, I'm old, but I'm not that old. And then, uh, you know, now you've got phones that are more powerful than your desktop computer. So it's, it's really interesting. So I'll, I just want to do a really quick overview of, uh, what we'll be kind of speaking to today. Um, we've been able to integrate uh, our past usage in critical operational aspects within an aerodrome environment, for, so Class C airspace, uh, which, is, which is very, very unique. Um, drone delivery, wildlife control, our pass, operational utilization, autonomous vehicles. I know it's not a drone, but I'm gonna have a do, I do have a slide on that one that we utilize. And, uh, you know, with Drone Delivery Canada, 
uh, one of our partners, Arium Analytics, uh, with the, the Robert product. And uh, we do high resolution imagery surveys, topographical analysis, inspection, and the, the usages are really endless, to be very honest with you. This one, I, I, don't, I don't expect anybody to be able to read this. <laughs> this is actually just a sample of one drone operation. It was for the Robird product. I'll have a slide on that later. One drone operation. So every single operation that we do on the airport, we go through this process. And, you know, there's some copying and pasting, you know, because it's, a, it's a applicable for that. But we average uh, about 600 flights our operations with Robert annually. And with all our other stuff, we're about 1,200 to 1,500 drone operations on site at the airport. So you can imagine the extent that we go through. And, and that is that proof of the safety concept. We're proving that this technology is safe and it works. Uh, this one is, as everybody within any industry, communication, communication, communication. If something breaks down, it's because you, somewhere along the line, the communication has broken down. So we endlessly meet with our stakeholders. NAV Canada is an incredible partner with us. Um, Transport Canada is an incredible partner with us. I will challenge them uh, on a regular basis to speed things up in the industry, to help us out, help the industry out. But, but it's that relationship you build so you can uh, move those challenges. And of course our tenants at the airport as well as uh, security police municipalities. These relationships are key and what we do is on every week we put out, again, I can't really read this, but it's just an idea of we put out uh, a communication to all of our stakeholders. Okay, this is the operations we're doing this week. Here are the locations we're doing it, and here's what to expect, so that they can a be aware, and uh, you know when they're doing their planning. Let's say an aircraft comes in, and one of the people that are on the aircraft comments about, "Oh, I think I think I've seen a drone." Well, then there's awareness that no, that that's an authorized drone on the airport, which is really weird for me. It's just kind of common day, but. But for in the community, when you say a drone on the airport, every oh my goodness, that's bad. You can't can't do that. But but we're utilizing them in in such a way that it is benefiting, and we just have to make sure that everybody's on the same page and aware of it. So Drone Delivery Canada, this this is uh, Trevor. What was it about two years ago? Co COVID has taken three years of our lives away, so I don't, I don't know exactly when it started. But but we we started this journey with them about two years ago, and what it is is we've uh, we've actually have a drone delivery program at Edmonton. Um, they, they fly from, it's called our airside operations facility to a location in the county, uh, Leduc County, uh, which is very unique. And they're actually, I believe right now, it's every hour on the hour. And they go, uh, pro I think it's from nine until four or five o'clock daily. So, so it's an actual scheduled operation. And this is on the diagram there. On the left, that's the drone site at the International. On the right is the one at the, uh, I think it's uh, Pat, Pat Wilson Memorial Park. Sorry, that's, I, I'm too much in the technical stuff. <laughs> um, and what it is is, is essentially a, uh, there we go. It, it's a, at, like a little trailer, uh, the CCAN that has been converted into a station or a substation. And all the operations are in there, all the computerized everything. The unique thing about this on the next slide, oops, is this drone, uh, this is the corridor. We've essentially established a drone corridor. When we started the program, uh, we had, uh, it was uh, two, sorry, three, vi no, three visual observers, because obviously we can't do the BV loss as yet. Um, so we stationed them in certain areas uh, on the far left, or your right, you can see our one runway 0220 and it kind of parallels the runway and then it veers off into the county across QE2, which is the main highway into Edmonton. Uh, what we've established is certain heights. Uh, it's lower around the buildings because we do have helicopter traffic coming in on finals on the taxiway Romeo. So we've, uh, we've allowed uh, that uh, access, I guess. And it gradually goes up across and then goes back down and believe it or not it's been we've had i think in the two years that we've had we've only had two people comment about the drone like our biggest fear was on uh, qe2 
as vehicles are driving back and forth and they see this big drone. It's a fair-sized drone. Um, and they see the drone going and, and we were figuring, okay, well, we, we have to be careful with that. And, and we had a, a huge communication campaign on, on social media as well as in municipalities. But the comments that came back were from pilots. They're driving home after a long day and they go, oh my goodness, I see a drone at the airport. So they phoned the RCMP or they phoned whoever. So obviously we have not reached those individuals. But, but the great thing about it is what we do when we do get a, a comment or a complaint is we actually bring those folks to the site. We offer them a tour and say, Here, here's what we're doing. Here's why we're doing it. And, and they're just all on board. Because anybody in aviation, as soon as it's, you explain it and, and really uh, show the, the value of it, it really changes the attitude. So this is essentially uh, uh, an established drone corridor. Um, I'm currently working on looking at getting this published in our uh, CFS and CAP. I'm, <laughs> I'm working on it because it, it's not there yet. But, but it, to me, that's just another step of safety identifying that, yep, we have a drone corridor here. Here's the parameters. Here's what we're doing. So, so stay tuned for that. And the very interesting thing about this, I started rambling there. Um, this is completely controlled from Ottawa, or sorry, Toronto. The pilot is in Toronto, flying this drone back and forth. And the observers obviously could, could, can take control if there's any uh, situations or, or need to, but, but, I, but I always like to highlight that because that just shows you that, yes, the technology works. Perfect, okay. This, this is a really where Edmonton Airport's kind of cut its teeth in this space of uh, drone operation. This is Robert. Um, I had a little video, but I, I couldn't get it to download properly. So if you want to go into YouTube sometime and just punch in Robert, there's several examples of this. This is a, a robotic Peregrine Falcon that has a, a flapping wing motion that we, this is the ninth season that it's in, in operation with us. It's part of our, I've heard it uh, actually probably the last two or three uh, presentations, it's a tool in our toolbox. So we use this in our summer wildlife program. And the, very, the interesting part about it is it so mimics a predatorial bird that we've actually been able to change migratory patterns of like geese and, uh, well, gulls are a different story. I'll get into that, but I think they're too stupid to move on. But, but, but yeah, so, so it really has worked because obviously in aviation, especially when, you know, the international airports and that, birds are, are extremely, extremely dangerous to us. So th this, is, uh, uh, this is some pretty techie stuff, but I'll explain. The yellow box that I have there that says 2023 20, proposed, we've been utilizing Robert up to the borders, what we call critical area A. So we, file, we were able to fly up to that point. Uh, we have not utilized it on an active runway. So this summer we're, we're gonna pilot a program where I'm actually going to be using it on an active runway. And when I mean active, not closed by NOTAM. So that way, um, when we have flocks at the 20 end, I can deploy Robert to that location and get those birds out of there. Where now I'm sending a truck and a, a wildlife officer out there with a gun or, or with a scare gun or whatever. But the delay is incredible. Where this, we can be stationed on the taxiway, boom, deploy. Now, of course, there won't be an aircraft landing at the exact same time that this is, uh, this is happening. It's all coordinated. Um, so it's a, it's a good coordinate, a good orchestration of the technology, but again, that's that communication. We have to ensure that we're, you know, in the same page with NAV Canada. This one, I like to use this one, especially from the robot space. The map on the left, uh, we heat map all of our bird sightings or, or heavy bird population locations. And we do this in the spring and in the fall, just so that we're ready for the next spring. And as you can see on here, there's some blue and, and around our, uh, we have uh, de-icing settling ponds up in the top, uh, be your right corner, it's red with a little circle around it. That area has a lot of bird activity and the map on the right are the missions that Robert have flown. So you can see we're utilizing the heat mapping to deploy the Robert to the location. And as you can see, 
we do a lot of work, especially on 0 to 20, right up against the uh, critical area A, but not onto the runway. So that's why I want to expand it. It's not saying there's no birds on the runway uh, at times. It's just that we've chosen not to take that next step. So, so we're working on that. But this is a really good representation of, you know, what you can do with the, the technology and how you can move it around to the areas that you have problems. We've seen that on a couple of presentations previous. So again, it's that adaptation of the, the product and what can you make it do for you so it's valuable. This one, I talked about this quick, I'm just gonna do it very quick. We have a uh, autonomous vehicle, it's a Polaris Razor that is rigged up with numerous types of cameras and it does our perimeter fence checks uh, I believe we have 27, 28.8 kilometers of fence line, pr uh, primary security fence line, and it roams it back and forth. And I always like to use the uh, one picture at the bottom with a little red, yellow circle. That is actually a tear in the fence. It's about this big. And I bet you we drove by, by it probably for six months. Didn't even know it was there because it, you know, with the uh, chain link fence, Unless you're standing beside it, you probably wouldn't see something that small. On the first mission this did, it picked it up. So again, utilizing technology. I know it's not a drone, but I, I just wanted to throw it in there. Uh, not to say we haven't had uh, challenges with this. Uh, obviously, with that much tech on it, we, it's just continual uh, adaptations and alterations and such. So what are we into next? This is what I always like to share as well. So we're doing some work with runway marking analysis. Um, basically, we're regulat regulated to ensure that the markings on the runways are within uh, uh, tolerances as per TP312, which is our regulatory manual. And we just do it visually or, you know, currently with a measuring tape. And you can imagine I've got two mile long runways, you know, um, some airports have been longer, and you know, that is extremely time consuming. So this allows us to do the scan get the information back, you're good, you're not, and uh, this is actually working very well. Uh, challenges the amount of data. It's just a huge data download, so they're working on that. Uh, foreign object debris, which obviously is, um, in layman's term, garbage on the runways, something that could cause damage to an aircraft. Um, this is huge, and this one, um, we are really looking at advancing this summer. Uh, actually getting it, uh, perfected because this is so valuable to us and it's such a safety issue because right now we do inspections a guy drives down the middle of the runway scanning scanning but we can't take three hours to go down the runway so you know human error whereas the drone or, or sensors go down it, it's immediate and it's accurate and then precision uh, approach uh, path indicators are a PAPI calibration uh, we did a bunch of this pre-COVID. I think we are the first airport to actually uh, utilize this technology to calibrate our pappies. And of course, this is just continuing, like we just been enhancing. So over on that, I'll turn it over to Trevor. Perfect, thank you, Dean. Um, so I'll go a little bit off script here, but I'm gonna talk about, and some of these words you've seen and understood before, and in this room especially, there's a lot of collaboration, a lot of ecosystems, and of course, what's driving that is partnership. But just to kind of give context to why an airport is involved in this space, right after safety and security, and Dean touched on that, that's the airport's primary business. It has to be safe, has to be secure. But behind that, airports are economic drivers for regions. Um, I work on the cargo side, so I have a bit of a bias on how cargo impacts regions and, and on that. But if you think of airports as a neutral space where people can come together, share their concerns, share their problems, and then also collaborate and come up with ideas and solutions. And some of these programs Dean was talking about, like the uh, Drone Delivery Canada program, which is also in partnership with an airline, Air Canada Cargo, airlines see the future of drones as well. There's billions of dollars expected to be spent over the no next number of years, from everything from end-to-end -end being port solutions in the future to, uh, to airports. So drones have many applications that, like a few years ago, I had an aha moment of like, okay, I get this and I understand where things are going. So I'll, I'll walk through some of the ecosystems on airport here. Um, and to Dean's point, we've been operating in this space close to a decade. So when we think of the thousands of flights completed by multiple partners on airport, what that does is provide a safe 
path forward for proven operations in controlled airspace. The reason behind the controlled airspace emphasis is that drones are, again, just another aircraft, and the work that Dean is doing and, and we are doing with our partners emphasizes the ability for drones and aircraft to operate. When we launched this program to go, and if you take a look, you can see the FedEx tail in behind the, uh, the uh, one propeller on there. It just gives you a bit of context on how close the drone's operating to that, that runway and that flight path. We were excited, but also at that same time, understanding when drones are flying over a highway at 150 feet beside a runway or beside an airport, we were understanding we were going to get a whole bunch of phone calls. So, but the, the other piece to that is people just came up and they were curious. They didn't want to report anything or they had more questions and concerns. And so that's part of what the airport does as well, is it connects with the community and educates. Everything around education, people understand, and then they start to understand how the applications of drones can be a part of their day-to-day -day life. So again, just touching on some of the industry-leading safety initiatives, operational initiatives. Um, another first, and you'll hear Edmonton Airport loves to be the first at things, but we do that through safe, safe approaches and safe steps. This was the first commercial uh, drone um, operation in a controlled airspace in Canada. We know that for certain, but we, in the world potentially, at a major airport. Um, but understanding as well some of the different drone verticals that operate. You know, I'm, I have my focus on air export, air cargo, but there are different drone verticals that have operated simultaneously on airport. We've had wildlife control, we've had commercial delivery and surveillance all operating through a HIRA process, all on the same day, all at the same time, with general aviation air traffic flying around. It was quite the sight to see. Um, so all these little milestones, what's really exciting, and uh, maybe to us, because we're airport geeks, but is the regulatory aspects and watching NAV Canada and that personal relationship and that understanding of coming out and seeing it and seeing it through their eyes saying, okay, this, this is another milestone, this is another path forward that, uh, that we're seeing in front of us. So that's the part that gets us really excited on the regulatory side, on the social side, the impacts that, that drones have, and just on airport let alone what's, what's to, to happen in the future. So, speaking with where airports are located, our strategic partners in Sturgeon County is Leduc County. We're looking to expand our drone program and that ecosystem and start to turn it into a, something more where we have that rural as well as that urban, I wouldn't say collision, but that, that overlap where we start to see how drones can, can operate in urban centers and direct from airport. So some of these um, uh, words to describe our airport were a living lab for incubation, testing, trialing, training, verifying drone applications. Um, and then the biggest piece, and I have to drive this, is education. Without education, no one understands how we're going to get somewhere. The practical nature is to come back and say, okay, so I have all these questions, like the farmers that would come up and say, they have their, you know, you turn that question around back to them and they have all these questions for you. Well, in fact, when they understand what they can do, the money, the time they can save, and the, the, the potential they have with these, these uh, um, aircraft, these drones, everything just becomes a lot easier to understand, simple and, and exciting at that same time. So um, some of the applications we've, we've gone through, the one that I want to highlight really are the B2B delivery solutions. So I'm not talking about drones are going to fly from airport and deliver your Tim Hortons coffee, even though there is a nice Tim Hortons right on that approach we have with our commercial drone operations at DDC. It's, um, it's, it's understanding how drones impact sustainable first mile, final mile, um, emerging modes of transport for uh, logistic solution providers. And then when we get into the um, applications around healthcare, security, safety, awareness, you start to throw all these um, challenges and gaps that exist currently in supply chain, and drones fit that to a T. They're able to perform seamlessly, again, through sustainable manner. Most of them operate on, on, uh, on battery. Um, and where we're looking in the future as well is sustainable aviation fuel within drones and how we can have that uh, operating. But really from the end of the day, drones are going to path their own way forward and we're just along for the ride. They're here to stay. So that's part of our education is bringing drones into that controlled airspace, ev uh, ele elevating the, the aspects and the impact they have, and then telling that story internationally. Because as an airport, we've also gained a reputation and a brand that's trusted in the drone space, and we want to leverage that uh, over the years, connecting to our community. 
I just want to point out some of the regional partnerships as well. So we see Zing, Arium, uh, Pegasus is on there, RMUS, Sturgeon County, Leduc County. But if we look along the bottom, without NAV Canada, transport, the relationships we have, and then locally in Edmonton, we have Edmonton Global, uh, who is our investment attraction arm in the region. All of us are collaborating and, and working towards driving value out of this. And seeing Air Canada Cargo and DDC, Drone Delivery Canada, airlines get this. They, they understand airplanes are going to continue to fly, they're going to continue to fly cargo, but drones will make their way into air travel eventually um, and safely. So maybe do you know. Perfect. So to kind of close it out, uh, I always like, uh, I've used this slide for a while now. It's really about the success. And I would say to this point, we've been very success successful with this these programs and it's about integrating the technology into the operational aspects of the airport environment in a safe achievable and very valuable manner um, it's not easy it's a lot of work it's a lot of partners it's a lot of uh, trial and error I, I shouldn't say the error part because we don't um, pretty confident in saying we don't allow the error we, we've Knock on wood, we've not had an incident. So now that I've said it, look out. No, no. But, but it's just really around if you do it the right way and you continue to hold yourself accountable, do the right things, do the checks and balances, do the checks and balances again and do them again, um, it really allows us to have a, a stellar program. Um, I love this. Ensuring real value, I'm just going to read this verbatim because it's just so impactful in my sense. Ensuring real value is being provided, removing the cool and neat factor and making this a practical solution. Because when we started, I, I was all over this because it was cool and neat. It was just like, oh, my, oh, this is awesome. Like this, you know, you're playing with these toys you used to play with when little kids, except they had strings and ropes on them at the time. Again, dating myself. Um, but, but, it, but it's really around ensuring that these cool and neat things are valuable and value added. And I, and I just uh, wanted to iterate about Transport Canada and uh, NAV Canada. We do work very, very closely with them and I've heard it a few times, BV loss, BV loss. That's the next thing that has to happen. So we are working with them on that to help them understand and by doing these things right, it, I think Trevor said it, it gives you that proof that yes, this can be done, and it can be done in an aerodrome setting, under restrictions, of course, but in a safe and effective manner. So on that, who knows what's next? I love this picture because I believe this is the future. It will be air taxi and those kind of airframes. Thank yeah. you very much. Thank you. Thank you, General. Thank you very much. That was actually quite... Quite fascinating. I, I particularly like the closing with that reminder of the value, the economic value that can be found across so many different uh, areas. So we will go to Slido, Slido questions. I'll see if my eyes can catch one. And we have, does air traffic control monitor the drone flights? Or are they listed in PIREPS? Uh, no, they don't. Um, on the site, like their community, they actually keep themselves... Um, at an arm's length, they're aware of the location, but they do not um, publish it. Like it's not a, there's no no tams or anything like that on it. But they are aware of the locations because of our communication. So. Thank you. And Robird, does Robird in and of itself attract aggressive behavior from other birds? We have not had an aggressive attack on Robird at the International, but I will tell a story. I believe uh, Arium, don't quote me on the place, but I believe it was in Fort McMurray. They were doing some works around the tailing ponds, and they actually had one attacked by, a, I think it was a bald eagle, and, they, and it took it to the ground because it was perceived as a predator to that bald eagle. So, yeah, so yes, <laughs> but not at Edmonton Airports. <laughs> oh, thank you. So, one question up there I found kind of fascinating as well. What about unauthorized drones? Has the authorized drone created a, an environment for the unauthorized? You're not going to answer it. No. <laughs> uh, actually, that's a very, very good question because that, I should have probably put that in there. We do have an extensive program on like th drones that aren't permitted aren't uh, allowed so to answer the question I don't know that we've seen a, an increase because 
we have campaigns that we work with the uh, Leduc uh, County Parks and Rec, uh, City of Leduc, which is the surrounding uh, municipalities around the international, uh, about um, they actually have our drone, no drone signs in their parks and locations. So it's again that, that education. Uh, we have had uh, a couple drones that are like uh, five or six nautical miles out. Very quick story. Uh, we had a D and D uh, helicopter actually come up on a or come down on a drone and uh, and pulled up right beside well not right beside but uh, and far enough away and the drone you could see the camera go on it and then it went down like it just dropped because obviously it was unauthorized in the area but but yeah so to answer the question uh, no but we are very cognizant of those campaigns that no you if you're flying a drone it has to be authorized so uh, there's a related question as well which is how can we as an industry mitigate the potential harm to the industry of the unauthorized yeah. drone? Education. I, I've heard that a lot uh, throughout this. And um, continue pushing the training. Get people in the space where they understand that you do need a, uh, you know, an advanced or a basic license or an FSO, SFOC to do this. And um, I, I, again, I heard it in a couple of the presentations, you know, like, flying away from people. Go out in a field where there's no people. Go where you're authorized to go. Don't launch one in your backyard and spy on your neighbor or whatever. Like, like be responsible, but it comes down to that education. I think us as an entire industry, and I hear this, that's why we're all here, continue that. Continue that, uh, that platform and say, you know, if you hear your neighbors or whatever wanting to do this and you're knowledgeable in it, help them. Help them understand what they're getting into. Thank you. Another one that's appearing with a little bit of uh, common interest is the delivery system. Is it proof of concept or is it a financial viability? Yeah, so great question. Um, <clears throat> part of the development of the drone delivery program that we had was a turn-up phase, and that was a phase to ensure it can operate safely. It is a commercial viable program right now. It's, uh, we get notifications every day, how they're flying, when they're flying, the conditions. So there are partners, uh, Zing Funnel Mile and Apple Express and ourselves, and we're also expanding that program to include uh, more uh, technical delivery systems that are probably uh, fall in the more traditional sense, but by drone into um, urban centers now. So it is a commercially viable program. Another kind of interesting one there with the perhaps proliferation of drones at the airport, how do you traffic control or manage drone traffic in addition to uh, commercial traffic? There is, again, a separate NAV Canada's responsibility and, and our responsibility. There is no traffic management other than the fact that um, if you're wanting to fly a drone on an airport property, you have to have permission. So to get that permission, you have to go through our process, which is the hire process. We evaluate your company, your abilities. We have all your training records. Uh, everything is documented. It's a, it's a quite a process. So that, that's our checks and balances. And again, anybody who's outside of that is considered a rogue and dealt with in a different avenue. <laughs> Wait, I think, we, thank you. We have one thank more, you. I just threw my pen at you. We have one more question, uh, which is an expansion of delivery. Do you see in the future delivery to remote communities from YEG? Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, no, without a doubt. Um, what, what, what we want to continue to do, and again, we've talked about the application. Once things become, you know, all the work we do on the regulatory side, the education side, the public awareness side, the technology, um, the drones, the different types of drones themselves, if you think of the ability to operate on airport through different hub and spoke systems or different types of drones that can go further and longer, uh, Dean, Dean and myself both want to see drones being able to go further, farther, uh, touching rural communities in that sense as well. Having drones operate maybe in their own uh, unique aerodrome sense. Again, this is much further in the future, but uh, connecting rural communities and, and um, having that ability is just, it's inevitable it's going to happen. Thank you both very much. And uh, it's a special note of appreciation. We changed the agenda. You've got a long drive to Edmonton. Thank you for staying with us Thank and you. drive safe on the way home.